you will get these types of questions. Who do you think you are? Oh, you brand new now. And you know what you should say? Yes. <laughs> yes, you are right. Thank you for detecting that. Thank you for realizing that I am brand new. I'm not that same person that you used to remember, but I, I still am me. Don't get me wrong, but I am on another level. What's going on, YouTube world? This is your guy, Sills the Man. Glad to be back. I'm glad that y'all are back. Thank you for coming back. And on today's video, we're going to talk about something very important. You know, I get questions a lot like, you know, how can you tell when someone's trying to take advantage of you? Or how can you tell when someone's trying to play you or, you, or that you're getting played? Or how can you tell when someone is not looking out for your best interests or, or is not a, a great person? Well, I am here to give y'all some clues, some hints, some tips based on all the things I've been through. Man, I, I've been through a lot of things with a lot of people who I thought were for me, who I thought had my back, family, strangers, friends, name it all. I've been through it all. So I'm going to be here to tell you guys and gals what to look out for when it comes to your enemies in disguise. There aren't a lot of guarantees in life, but this is one guarantee. You will always have an enemy in disguise, whether you know it or not. Whether they're jealous of you, whether they want what you have, whether they're mad because you went to another level and left them, people will become your enemy in disguise for many reasons. But you got to watch out for those people, right? So I'm going to talk about in this video. You're going to need to watch this. So pay close attention and check this out. But before I start, make sure you subscribe. And, and talk about it in the comment section below. I'm always uh, looking forward to those comments. Uh, like it, please. And uh, share. Share for people who who have trouble detecting their enemies in disguise or anyone you feel like would benefit from this video. All right? So what I'm going to let y'all know are the questions that enemies in disguise ask. Because it seems like they all ask the same type of question. And they're asking them for a reason. And the first question I'm going to give to y'all to always pay attention to, to detect your enemy in disguise, is the person who always asks, why are you always so happy? Why are you always smiling? You see, those type of questions are a big red flag. Because why do you feel like you have the, 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 the gumption, the, the audacity to ask someone why they are happy? Like, are, are they supposed to be sad? Are they supposed to be mad? Are they supposed to be going through it? Like, I, I don't understand. Isn't life all about being happy? Isn't that the goal in life? So the fact that someone asks you that, why are you always happy? Why are you smiling? You need to look out for that because most likely they're not looking out for your best interests. They're not trying to uh, lead you to happiness or, or show you happiness because they're asking why you're happy. I always found that to be a weird question. Why are you asking me why I'm always smiling? Why not? I feel like the world needs smiles more than ever now, correct? So when someone asks you that kind of question, it's most likely because they don't want you to be happy or they don't want you to smile. And your smile and your happiness is intimidating them it's, or it's even making them jealous. They don't want that for you. Super weird question, right? So the next question, the second question that most enemies in disguise will ask you is who do you think you are? You think you brand new? Check you out. So an enemy in disguise will ask you this question is because they have realized that you've taken your life to a next level. You have taken your life to another level. You are on a different scale. You are in a different field. You are not the person that they are used to, especially relatives, Ooh, relatives, relatives, family. Oh, man, because they have raised you and they have seen you grown from young to, to old. And they feel like you owe them because maybe they helped raise you. But when they feel like you have extended or grown outside of their reach or beyond their reach, that can make some relatives mad. Or even friends, the friends you've grown up with. Y'all were on the same level at one time. Maybe y'all diverged a little bit and chose different paths, but y'all were friends. Y'all were all in the same boat at one time, but you de you decided to elevate your life. And maybe they didn't. Maybe they were comfortable and you decided, no, I'm not comfortable. I don't want to be comfortable. I want to take my life to the next level. Sometimes those friends will hate that for you because y'all were all in the same boat and because they were comfortable, they want to be comfortable with you being in the same boat for the rest of your life. But when some people decide to take it to the next level, when they decide that they want more than what they have, sometimes their own friends will get mad at that because they want to, because they want them to stay down with them. 
And there's a thing about elevating yourself, elevating your life. You won't do the same things you used to do, especially with those people who are mad, those enemies in disguise. You won't dress the same way you dress. You won't talk the same way you talk. You won't be desiring the same things you used to desire. And when someone who is who was used to doing those things or sharing those types of things with you, see that you have moved on to something greater, something better, something more profound, something more worthwhile, you will get these types of questions. Who do you think you are? Oh, you brand new now. And you know what you should say? Yes. <laughs> yes, you are right. Thank you for detecting that. Thank you for realizing that I am brand new. I'm not that same person that you used to remember, but I, 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 I still am me. Don't get me wrong, but I am on another level. Yeah, I no longer drink. I no longer smoke. I don't no longer gossip. Whatever it is, if you are doing something different from what you used to do with them, that can tick them off and that can create an enemy in disguise. Because they will still use the mask of friendship with you. But in, in behind the curtains of that mask, they are mad. They are pissed. They are angry. They are uh, uh, jealous. It's so many things. So the next time someone asks you, who do you think you are? <laughs> Tell them there's so much more to come. Stay tuned. The next question that enemies in disguise ask are, what are some things you hate about your family? What are some of the things that tick you off about your best friend? What are some of the things you don't like about the people you love? Now, this question is it's very deep it can be very conniving and usually these types of questions come from your loved one your your boyfriend or girlfriend your husband or wife or whatever the person you're romantically involved with or you have a relationship with because these questions are asked by manipulators they're asked by narcissists they're asked by people who are trying to control you and people who are trying to ruin everything associated to you to gain more control over you. Now, let me explain. I always warn people to be careful with whom you vent to. Be careful with who you tell your secrets to. And in regards to this question, be careful with telling people what you don't like about the people closest to you. Because those same people will use that against you if they have to one day. And I always say your worst enemy is your best friend. Because they know everything about you. So please choose your friends wisely and please choose your partner wisely. So the reason why people, well, or should I say enemies in disguise will ask this is because they're trying to get a one up on you. They're trying to figure out how they will be able to use your weaknesses with your family to separate y'all two. You got to understand when people separate you from your, 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 your support base, your family, your loved ones, your friends, that makes you alone. You have no backing now. So whoever this manipulator is, this controller is, this sneaky conniving ringmaster is, now that he has you separate from your family, your loved ones, your friends, he has too much control over you now. He has too much power over you now. Now he's probably going to try to move you away from your family even further to have more control over you. This happens every single day. People will use your weaknesses with your association to disassociate you from your associations. It's crazy. And the thing about good men is that we don't harbor on weaknesses. We don't harbor on issues. We don't harbor on problems that you have with people important to you. What we do is try to strengthen your union, your relationships with those people, if possible, depending on the situation. Because if I'm in a relationship with you, if I'm married to you, I want the best for you. And I know one of the, 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 the best avenues to happiness in someone's life is to have a good relationship with their family, with their loved ones, with their friends. Otherwise, this is a very lonely life, even if you're married. It is different to have a great relationship with your family, the ones who've been with you forever, even before your boyfriend or girlfriend, whatever the, whatever the person is to you. So as a good man, I'm going to strengthen that. I'm going to try my best to solve that because I want the best for you. I want you to have as much happiness as possible. But for people who are opposite of that elk, they're going to try to disband you. They're going to try to separate you from those people. And once they figure out there's blood in the water, they're going to try to find out how I can increase the blood in the water so I can increase my power over you. So be careful with people who ask about your weaknesses with important people in your lives. All right. Be careful with whom you vent to. So the next question that an enemy in disguise might ask you is 
Why does so-and-so always talk behind your back? <sighs> this question makes me laugh every single time I hear it, every single time I even think about it. Because I always say, why is it that this person is so comfortable talking about me behind my back to you? Let's think about that. Why is this so-and-so person always so comfortable and eager to talk about me behind my back around you? Because I know me. I'm a great friend. I will boast and brag about that. If I am your friend, I will be one of your greatest friends of all time because I take pride in friendship, right? I defend my friends. So if you're talking about my friend or even my relative around me, guess what? I'm going to defend them. I might not even know if it's true or not, whatever this person is saying, but guess what? I'm going to defend them because there's no way you're going to talk about someone I care about, someone I rock with around me. Because how would I look if I follow that, right? If I follow you in this, in, in this, uh, this talking, what, what, and I, and I continue this conversation. Yeah, 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 that's true. Wow, I never knew that. No, nah, that's not a good friend because what you're not going to do is get comfortable about talking about my friend to me, and you know that is my friend. So back to the question, if anyone asks you why this person, this so-and-so person is talking about you behind their back, always talking about you behind their back, you need to ask them, why are they so comfortable talking about me around you? Like, did you defend me? Because it doesn't seem so. Because there are many situations where I were around people who will talk about people I know, talk about people I care about, and I shut it down and I shut that down. You know me, I, I defended that. But my friend never knew. I didn't have to tell my friend because I shut that down. I will never go to my friend and be like, yo, so-and-so talking about you crazy, yo. Like, I would never because I took care of that. So be careful about people who are always talking about people talking about you behind their back around them. You need to check them. So let's get to the next question about, you know, enemies in disguise and the types of questions they would ask. Why don't you have any kids? Why are you still single? Now, this is the type of question that is uh, I would classify as personal, ultra personal, super personal, especially specifically if you are a woman, because this is the thing, right? No one knows what women go through. No one knows what this woman is going through. Maybe she is trying to have kids, but women have so many complications with kids so it is the utmost rudeness that anyone would ask you, why don't you have kids? Because you know there's so many possibilities that this woman may be having complications. You don't know. Or maybe this woman doesn't want kids. Either way, it's none of your business, none of your concern. And then going to asking if she's single, why does it matter to you? She is living the life she wants to live. If she wants to be single, she's going to be single. If he wants to be single... He's going to be single. But what does that matter to you? Are you trying to make them feel bad? Maybe you are married or, or you have a relationship and you're asking this person to like try to boast your own relationship. Is that your motive? I always you know, wonder the motives behind people's questions. And it's specifically this question. I feel like this types, these types of questions are more hurtful than inquisitive because the answer that you're trying to get out of this question doesn't help you none bit. What is what what does it do for you? Right? It's more invasive than anything. And it's just rude, disrespectful. Mind your business. Mind the business that minds you, right? Some questions you should not ask like that. Think about things before you speak it, all right? Another reason why this question may be a question of an enemy in disguise, because once again, they're trying to hurt you. They're trying to remind you of the position you're in. Like, yeah, you ain't got no kids. Probably because you can't have no kids. Yeah, you're single probably because uh, you can't find a man or you can't find a woman. Probably it's because of you. You, you, you. You're the issue. You're the problem. You don't have what I have. So I'm going to shove it in your face, even though even as I know asking this type of question may be hurtful, but I'm going to do it anyway, just to remind you of your position. Be careful about people who ask this type of question, these types of questions. All right. 
The next and final question that enemies in disguise will ask you is why are you always moping around? Why are you always sad? Whatever you're going through can't be that serious. You're too young for that. Man up. Woman up. People who ask these questions can truly be enemies in disguise. And there is one main reason why. It is because if you're asking this type of question, you clearly don't care about their mental health. Because there's no way you can care about someone's mental health or how they're doing and you ask this type of question. Why are you always sad? Why are you always moping around? Because if you were that concerned, you would try to help me. <laughs> right? If you were that concerned about why I'm always sad, you would ask me if I'm okay. You would ask me the reason why you think I'm always sad and moping around or mad or angry, right? But if you ask this type of question, it's almost like you're just trying to brush me off. Because mental health has been one of the biggest topics in the last decade so far. With the, the, the suicide rates skyrocketing, especially with COVID, people at home just going crazy inside these walls. The shootings in schools. Everything is visible now. Everything is in your face now. If you watch the news, it is nothing but bad. And they'll try to throw some some little cat in the tree good story just to make it better. But most of the news is bad. Everything is in your face now. Everything is digital. Everything is in your hands now. So depression is on an all time high because it is shoved in your face. So saying all that, if someone is sad or feeling down or looking like they're down, Instead of asking why they're always sad, how about you find a solution? That's that's if you truly care. But an enemy disguise doesn't care. In fact, when they ask questions like this, they are trying to reinforce your sadness or whatever emotion you're going through right now. They realize you're down and asking this type of question is going to kick you further down because this question offers no solution. People who ask these types of questions do not care about improving you. Because if they did, they would ask a question that would lead to an answer to help you. So make sure y'all pay attention to that, all right? I hope y'all understand what I'm saying with these six questions. And always take into consideration when you hear these type of questions. Look at the person. Look at your relationship with this person. Look at all the possibilities. Because I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. But most of your enemies are disguised are people you are close to. Be careful out there, all right? So thank you for coming back to my video. Hopefully this video helped you, and I will see you on my next video. Peace and blessings. Goodbye.